Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the verse, He says, and then He gives another order. He tells Rasulullah to tell the woman, وَلَا يَضْرِبْنَ بِأَرْجُلِهِنَّ لِيُعْلَمَ مَا يُخْفِينَ مِنْ زِينَتِهِنَّ Allah says, Ya Rasulullah, tell the woman that when they walk, let them not, let them be careful not to strike their feet on the floor and stomp on the floor in a way in which it will make sounds and men will be tempted. So the Quran is saying, when women walk, be careful. Don't draw men's attention when you walk. You see some people, when they walk the loud noises, if there is people in the room, everyone all of a sudden begins to what? Begins to look. They draw attention. The Quran clearly says, when you walk, walk in a modest way. Walk in a, walk in a modest way, so that you do not bring men's attention. And what happened is, what this verse is speaking about, is during the time of Rasulullah, the Arabs, and it exists till now, but it's almost obsolete now. It's almost archaic and, and, and out of date. Is that the woman, one of the forms of jewelry that they would wear, is a form of bracelet on the ankle. That's called an anklet. You, won't, you, you rarely find women wear it now. But they used to wear these anklets. And when they would walk, it would make noises. And up to 30, 40 years ago was common. I don't know here, but in the Muslim countries it was common. It's called the khalkhal in the Arabic language, or some call it al-hijr. And you find that when the woman would walk, they were wearing this anklet, it would make a noise. And obviously, if there's a man, he enjoys it. He's, 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 he's tempted by this. So the Quran says, do not draw attention. Be modest when you walk. Don't make those loud noises so that you bring men's attention. And you find how accurate and how delicate the Quran is with the, with the idea of modesty. That even something as small as a sound, that a woman makes a sound with her feet, the Quran says, don't do that. Be modest. Why? I'll speak about this more the day after tomorrow. The Quran is showing us that men are very sensitive when it comes to the opposite gender. They are very, very, very sensitive. And I'll speak more about this the day after tomorrow. So be careful the way you talk, the way you walk. This could lead to many other things. The Quran says even your walk has to be modest. And thus, based on this, you find some ulama, they say, you know, there's the high heels. Now, you know where the ankle, there's the high heels. The ulama say, we have to be careful with the high heels. If you wear the high heels and this draws men's attention and seduces and tempts them, it is haram. Get rid of those high heels. This is a way in which you're leading to what? To other things. A man is walking by, he hears that sound, he comes back. He comes back and the shaitan will lead to many other things. So we have to be very careful with this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very strict when it comes to modesty. Now this verse says, no sounds, no drawing men's attention, even if it's small as a, you know, a sound that's made by the feet. Some ulama of the tafsir, they have come and they said, this part of the verse itself, it proves that hijab is wajib, and it proves that Muslim women must cover themselves up. Why? They say if Allah says that something as small as a sound is banned, you think Allah will permit women to go up with their bodies showing? If something as small and trivial as a sound is haram, he says, This is haram. Allah will tell them, then go out with your hair, with your beautiful long hair, and, and, and it's all permed, and, and you know, spend thousands of dollars on it, and so beautiful. Think Allah will permit showing hair when he says the sound is haram. Don't you think the hair is more tempting? The, the hair draws more attention?